everyone, and welcome back to Presley Mania. I'm so glad that you have tuned in for my show today. We are going to deviate off the beaten path. I know, I know, don't be shocked. <laughs> We're not going to be talking about Priscilla this and Priscilla that today. We are going to talk about someone who Elvis referred to as his best girl. Any idea who that would be? It was probably who most people describe as the love of his life, and that was his mama, Gladys. That's what I thought we would do a show about. Um, this week and probably next week as well. Gladys just had a birthday on April 25th, and um, also Mother's Day is coming up. So I take a break from all of the negativity with Priscilla and let's talk about somebody who was such a positive influence on our man Elvis. Someone that he loved with every beat of his heart and he never stopped. And she loved him back. Oh my gosh. He was the apple of her eye and um, I think in some ways that when he became famous and he was gone so much that it became difficult for her to continue to be upbeat and positive and those kind of things. But um, that's, that's a subject for another day. So let's talk a little bit about Miss Gladys. I want you guys to know that I've pulled a lot of my information from this book. Elvis and Gladys by Elaine Dundee. I don't know how many of y'all have read that book, but I am telling you, I, I'm looking to make sure my microphone is on because the last show I recorded for y'all, I did a whole show. I went back to check it out, and lo and behold, I am just, you can see me and my mouth is moving, but there is absolutely no sound coming out. Not, not a lick. <laughs> I had not turned my microphone on, so I wanted to make sure it was on so I wouldn't have to re-record it. But back to this book. Um, I don't know how many of you have read it, but I am curious if you have found it as difficult of a read as I am. Um, I am one of those kind of people, I can start a book and I can usually finish it in two or three days. And sometimes I've been known to take a book and just read all day long and finish that thing. Not the case with this one. Um, I started it and I'll read a little bit and then I stop. And then I read a little bit and then I stop. Or I get sleepy and I'm like going, okay, what is going on with this? And it's not that it isn't interesting. I think that the first part of it, I'm, I'm to chapter nine now, and I think the first part of it has been just a little slow in that I am, <laughs> um, it's talking a lot about the history of Gladys's family. It's talking a lot about where all they lived, and you know, I'm kind of wanting to know more about Mama Gladys, and I'm wanting to know more about Elvis, and so I've had to go back and reread some of it and go back and look up some things, especially for this show, because like I said, it is full of information, but it has been hard for me to finish, and so it's my goal now, y'all. I'm going to finish that book. <laughs> okay, let's talk about Miss Gladys. She was born, like I said earlier, on April 25th, but in 1912. And she passed away on August 14th of 1958 at the age of 46. A lot of people have said, oh, I thought she was 42 when she died. Well, when you look it up on the internet, some sites say 46, some say 42. But I am pretty convinced she was 46 years old. Um, and I will tell you how I came to that conclusion here in a little bit. And... Um, it's, it's really quite interesting. So she was born in Pontotoc County, Mississippi. And Pontotoc County is right next to Lee County. And why is Lee County so important? Because that is 
the county Tupelo, Mississippi is in. And we all know what happened in Tupelo, Mississippi. That's where our, our guy Elvis came into this world and took his first breath. So anyway, she was born in Pontotoc County. She was born to a family of sharecroppers. They um, were very poor. They didn't stay at one place very long. You know, if they'd be here a couple of years and then they'd move to the next place. And that's just kind of how it was back in those days when you were a sharecropping family. You tried to, you did what it, what it would take to make ends meet, you know. Um, I think that was just the way of the world back then. There wasn't just a whole lot of money. People, there were a lot of people who were poor. And this is the family Gladys came from. But they uh, were a tight family. They loved each other. Uh, they did a lot of things together. And she grew up with knowing what it meant to, to be a family and love her family and support each other and care for each other. Um, she was described by her sister Lillian in, in a very unique way, I thought. She said, her sister Lillian said that there were like two sides to Gladys. There was the private Gladys, and the private Gladys had fears, and, and she was, she was, um, how do I put it? She could be high strung, she could be nervous, um, she was afraid of thunderstorms, they would, they would get her all upset and worked up, and noises, she was very apprehensive of things, and she would think sometimes that people were hiding in the bushes, and she was just a little fearful, but the public Gladys, when she put on her public face, um, she was different, and I guess she appeared to be a little more, um, how do I word it, in control, that type of thing. Um, her sister Lillian said that she was very stubborn. She was very headstrong. Um, and I can see that. Um, looking back at her, her history with Elvis, that she was. She had to be stubborn and headstrong because she, she, knew, she was the one who ended up taking care of that family of Vernon and Elvis. Um, and she made sure that they were always taken care of. Vernon had trouble, you know, um, early on to keeping a job, <laughs> and they struggled as well. So, anyway, that's a little background of how she was described. So, kind of keep that in your in your head as we delve into the story of Miss Gladys. Um, she lost her daddy when, when she was only 19 years old. He passed away. Her mother was an invalid. She was in bed most of the time. I know you've probably all seen pictures of Doll. Her it was Doll Manziel, and then she married, um, I believe his name was Bob Smith, I believe. And I think they were, they were like first cousins. And there's a lot of stories into that as to they think that may have caused some health problems and this and that. I have no idea at this point, and I don't want to delve into all of it. So we're just going to skim over that part. But he, uh, they, were, they were a very nice-looking couple, and I think I even have a picture I can show y'all in here in the book if you don't know what they looked like. Oh yeah, here they are. Bob and Doll Smith. She was very doll-like looking. Let me see if y'all can see. Can you see? That's them in the lower corner here, right next to the picture of Elvis and Vernon and Gladys. But she was very pretty. She had dark hair and um, a lot of people think that Elvis may have gotten some of his, you know, good looks from the Manziel side. Although, I thought 
that Gladys had some beautiful features as well, and I definitely think Vernon was a good-looking man. So, um, anyway, let's move on to, to this. So, when her dad died, they were sharecropping a farm, and they, a man provided the casket for Bob because they were poor. They didn't have anything, and he was ended up being buried in an unmarked grave in a cemetery um, there in Pontotoc County. Well, it's going to force another move. So they eventually end up in Tupelo, and Gladys was, um, I'm guessing, around 20 when they got to Tupelo, and she had not been there very long. In fact, it was shortly before her 21st birthday. She happened to see a guy that she just could not get out of her out of her system she was walking around one day there were like five streets that in the area they lived that she frequented and one day she was walking and it the book says that it was in April and lo and behold she looks up and there is a tall fair haired man and she thought he was beautiful and so every day she wanted to make sure when she was doing her walk that she would see him it became a mission to her and come to find out the man also went to her church and they attended the first assembly of god tabernacle well gladys decided that she wanted to find out who this boy was. And so she made some inquiries and come to find out, found out that he was um, part of the Presley clan and that his name was Vernon. Well, it didn't take long for the two of them to start hanging out and they would go to the roller skating rink and, you know, skate around and, and stuff like that. And I guess it must have been a whirlwind romance because the two of them fell in love and what did they do well so the first mention in this book that says when she met him was in april on june 17th of 33 so she met him in april of 33 on june 17th of 33 miss gladys and mr vernon eloped that's right. I don't know if many of you knew that or not, but they did. But they knew they couldn't get married in Tupelo because everybody there knew Vernon's real age. Vernon was only 17. And Gladys hadn't been there long enough for them to really figure out how old she was. But here's where that age difference thing comes in that I was telling you guys about. Vernon was 17 and Gladys was 21 years old. <laughs> so she's four years older than Vernon. So remember I said, some people said that she was 42 when she passed. Some said she's 46. I'm pretty sure she's 46. So anyway, let me tell you a little bit about how this day went. Okay. Let me find where I was in my book. Let's see. Here we go. All right. Vernon had, and remember I told you, they were poor. And the Presley family was no different. They were poor as well. But they figured out that they wanted to get married and they were going to elope to do it. So that means there were going to have to be some lies told. So what did they do? On Saturday, June 17th of 1933, they had a friend, or Vernon had a friend, and his name was Marshall Brown. And he becomes an important part of this story. He loaned Vernon $3 to get the marriage certificate. <laughs> Not only did he lend him the $3, Marshall and his girlfriend at the time, who was Vona May, who was also, her maiden name was Presley, those two and Vernon 
and Gladys went to Pontotoc County, the county where Gladys was born. And they went there. They, they did a lot in one day, y'all. They got their marriage license. <laughs> they got married that day. Let's see, it says all in one day, they made an out an application for a marriage license. They made out a marriage license and certificate. And then by virtue of a license from the clerk of the circuit court of said county of Pontotoc, the circuit clerk, Mr. J.M. Gates, this day celebrated the rights of matrimony between Mr. Vernon Presley and Miss Gladys Smith. Well, how in the world did they get around that age thing? Because Vernon had to be, you know, like, I think 18 in order to get married. How did they get around it? Vernon lied. Vernon lied and said he was 22. Well, Gladys didn't want to seem, you know, whatever. So Gladys says, <laughs> Gladys says that she is, let's see, where was it that I read that a while ago? She was 19. So Vernon says he's 22. She says she's 19. When really, she's 21. So anyway, um, it's, it's really quite funny, I think. Um, it goes on and it says that the way that she could get away with that is this. That when they went to, to um, Pontotoc, they knew that they wouldn't know how old Vernon was. And that was the main thing. Gladys was old enough to get married, but Vernon wasn't. So they also did not have um, their birth certificates. They didn't have those, and the births didn't have to be registered, and certificates did not have to be issued. It was not passed in Mississippi until late 1912. Well, Gladys was born in April of 1912. Therefore, she was not registered. Her birth wasn't registered. She didn't have a birth certificate. So they could, they believed her, you know, but she wanted to appear younger than Vernon. So she said she was 19 and she wasn't. <laughs> I just think that's so funny. So they ended up getting married, and um, they didn't know where they were going to live. Vernon didn't know how he was going to tell his dad because he was he was somewhat afraid of his dad, I think. Um, Jesse Presley, according to this book, um, had a bit of a temper, and we all know what happened with Jesse and Minnie Mae, or I, I do. I know some of you probably do. He ended up leaving Minnie for another woman. And he and he states when they filed, when the divorce was filed, that Minnie left him, which is a total lie. He left her. <laughs> so Jesse is a character in himself, and someday we might ought to delve into him because it's quite in, he's quite interesting. So anyway, um, they get married. They didn't know where they were going to live. Vernon didn't know how he was going to tell his family. But they ended up working it out. Moved in with some family and began their married life together. Um, this book also says that for all the fooling herself about Gladys trying to fool herself about her age, um, it says she would do it till the end of her life. And for all her inveterate romanticism, Gladys didn't fool herself for one minute about Vernon, it says. It says that she knew, and I'm going to quote the book, he was not going to make life any easier for her, and he was not going to make anything of himself. Of course, she must have thought, as all women do, that she might make something of him, but she wasn't counting on it. She simply accepted him for what he was, a ravishingly handsome, 
tender-hearted, unambitious young loafer. <laughs> what a description! Can you imagine somebody describing your husband that way? But according to this book, Gladys knew exactly what she was getting into, and she loved him anyway. And it says that um, she loved him passionately and without question, he returned her love. Impetuosity and impulsiveness played a large part of her makeup. So, that's our first little introduction into Miss Gladys. I hope you enjoyed this look into the, the young Mama Gladys and what she was like before she had Elvis. We know that shortly after she and Vernon married that she became pregnant with twins. And um, one of these twins was Elvis Presley. And so we will delve into that next week and talk about some stories of Elvis and his mama and how she influenced his life. I hope you've enjoyed this little segment. And remember, you only get one shot at this life. So live each day to the fullest because you never know what tomorrow's going to bring. Have a good one, everybody. Thanks again for tuning in. Oh, and if you have not subscribed to my channel, please be sure and do that. It helps me go up in the algorithm so that when people search for things about Elvis, my show will pop up as well. I appreciate you all so much. Thank you for all that you do to support my channel. Have a good one. Bye, everyone.